You know, there is a philosophical and a very expensive battle between Democrats and Republicans on how to keep this recovery going. Democrats are of the view of the more the government spends, the more we'll stimulate things and the more recovery will show some traction. Republicans are just of the opposite view uh, because I think that this is going to do more harm than good to say nothing of the inflationary pressure it puts on the economy. So pick your uh, well side. Nancy Mace, the uh, Republican of South Carolina, already has. She thinks this is a dangerous trend and that it will hurt the recovery. Congresswoman, very good to see you again. And thank you, Neil, for having me on today as well. Um, it's been a rough week for you, and I do want to go on what was happening at your home early in the week, Congressman. But I do want yeah. to first off go on, on to what's happening on the recovery front. You just heard from the senior White House economic advisors convinced that all of this spending is doing some good. Now's not the time to curtail it. What do you think of that? Well, President Biden just had another missed jobs report with the May jobs report, the numbers released today, and he missed that 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 hit, that that goal by 111,000 jobs. And last month was no better. I mean, we're seeing uh, the Democratic policy of more spending, greater debt, more expansion of uh, money in the in the by the Federal Reserve printing money. All this is having a negative effect. On top of it, the Biden administration is literally paying people to stay home. And right, Neil, right before I came on your program, I got a text from a friend of mine in the district who went to a retailer uh, a few hours ago, and that retailer shut its doors a few weeks ago because they couldn't get people back to work. The federal government is paying people to stay home, and it's hurting businesses. You know, no doubt that does have an impact, to, to your point, uh, as far as, you know, employment reports that miss their predicted numbers. I mean, it's not an exact science. Uh, I've covered these for many, many years. So the administration turns around and says, all right, say what you will about the jumps in different months and whether they missed or met estimates. We're averaging uh, better than 400,000 new jobs a month. That's a pretty good trend, you say? I, no, it is a good trend, but we can do better. A state like South Carolina right now, our unemployment rate is hovering just over 4%, and I'm grateful to Governor Hidden McMaster, who's going to uh, pass on the extra and additional federal unemployment this month. More people will be able to go back to work. In South Carolina, we have 85,000 jobs available and over 100,000 people sitting on unemployment right now. We've got so much opportunity here, and if we can incentivize people to go to work and not stay home, then we can have even greater numbers in the future. You know, uh, Congressman, it's the first time I've had talked to you. It's only been a week, and you've heard on my weekend show, and then just a few days later you get word your home has been vandalized, and uh, that's a home for you and your daughters. And I'm just wondering, do we know who was behind it? I knew, uh, you know, it, it got pretty scary, but can you update us? It's, it's jarring, really, and it doesn't feel good when I feel like I've got to look over my shoulder. I, I'm a single mom. I'm raising my two kids here. This is their childhood home. And when I picked them up from school on Tuesday, one of the first things we talked about it, um, one of the first questions was, Mommy, are we safe? And it's distressing to be in the political environment that we're in today, that somebody will show up on your home and vandalize it because they disagree with you. We can have disagreements, but this isn't the way we should go about talking about them. And I've been, I've been a very strong voice. I, I, I go, I, I talk against my own party and the Democratic Party for things that I really believe in. I'm passionate. Today, we had a strong lead two days ago. And yes, last night I found out that that lead went dry. I'm feeling very discouraged today. It's past time people that do this kind of political vandalism or, or harm other people or threaten people that they're held accountable. I just want the person that did it to be held accountable. And whoever whoever did this, if they thought they were going to intimidate me, well, they thought wrong. I'm going to work harder than ever. I'm going to do the job that I was elected to do, and nothing's going to stop that. So you and your daughters were home when this occurred, but you discovered all the, the vandalism that next morning, correct? No, I was no, we were not home. In fact, one of my kids had a sleepover on Sunday night. I had date night, so I okay. wasn't even home when it happened. <laughs> I found out when I was on my way right. back in the morning, and um, the police were notified someone, a jogger, had come by the house and reported it early in the morning, and I was already on the way home that morning when I found oh, out man. and walked up on my house. The police were here. It's very unsettling, and if I and if I had footage I could release of it, I would. I'm desperate to find answers and clues because I want this person to be charged and held accountable to the full six of the law. Now, we do know there were reports of three Antifa symbols that were spray-painted uh, on, on your property. Right. 
Um, did they know anything more about that, about the source of this or a group like that? They don't. I know that within Charleston, there are a handful of Antifa and anarchist type of groups that have done graffiti. There was other graffiti after my house was targeted on Monday morning, the early hours of Monday morning, um, that uh, the individual looks like spray painted two other locations. And then about two months ago, there was some spray painting on the island where I live at a high school. So the police are investigating whether these things are related or how they're related. I'm desperate for clues and information on this one. It's very, it's, it's troubling and it's jarring to walk up and be home. I, I don't feel safe in my own home and it doesn't matter what your political beliefs are, but everyone should feel safe at home. I don't, I don't live behind a wall. I don't have a gate. I live in my community with everybody else. I live in the home where my, where my children, this is our childhood home and they're, I'm raising them here. I have nowhere to go and I'm not gonna stand for it and I wanna stand strong. I'm gonna keep doing the work I was elected to do. All right, uh, Congress, keep us posted on that and whether they ever get to the bottom of it. But you know, we can disagree on political matters in this country, but man, oh man, that is uncalled for. Um, so be well, be strong, my best to your girls. You Thank you. You have to deal with that. Um, we are better than that as a people, I suspect. Uh, Nancy Bates of the House Oversight and Reform Committee.